Hey, oh, Miguel, how are you doing, sir? I'm really good. Thanks oh, hey, very mean for being here with your audience. Well, today. I am so happy to see you today. It is such a pleasure. Um, My pleasure. I, I, I have to say, I love your sweatshirt. Is that one? Do you have a sweatshirt and a scarf on? What? Are, what, what? Oh, no, this is a poncho. It's a Mexican poncho. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite oh. windy here, a little bit cold, so it's a good thing to have. Um, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, well, that, that makes perfect sense. Oh, excited. Oh, and we've got so many great people are are, are hopping in. Uh, we've got, you know, Mark, Donald, good to see you. Our Power BI coach is here. Uh, Christina, how was the honeymoon? I hope that went well. Did yeah, um, uh, Miguel, have you met Christina? Not yet. Oh, she, 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 Christina's <laughs> fantastic. You, you've got to, you've got to meet her. She's just wonderful. It's, yeah. it's, it's good day, to see her. Um, day, uh, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we've got uh, Stina from Texas on as well. And oh, oh nice. everybody is in the house. So. All right, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a little experiment here because we're gonna be getting into like a whole bunch of different stuff here around um, uh, new visuals and all that good good stuff here. Um, uh, what I would like to know in the chat, I want to hear from everyone on uh, with a slash in between them. Uh, so this would be over and under. So, what is your favorite Power BI visual? And what is your least favorite Power BI visual, right? So the, one um, the most used. So uh, which one is the one that you use the most? To, to... Oh, okay, all right, there you go. And, and yeah. So we got three. Yeah. Favorite, least favorite, most used. Okay, that is what we want to start start seeing from from people, so we can get. <laughs> um, <I'm upset. laughs> <laughs> Table maker. <laughs> uh, oh, good deal. So, um, uh, do you know what the most used visual is, Miguel? Yeah, the, the, the card visual. The card visual? The card visual is one of the most used. Okay. Along with slicers. That's correct. Along with slicers? Yep. Oh. Well, it would be great if we could start by creating new visuals if we start on the card and then the slicers. Is that yeah. something we could probably do? That's what we are doing. I <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, all right. Um, where's, the, where's, where's the love for scatter chart? Yeah. Scatter chart is my favorite. It's my, it's my favorite visual. I think it, it provides the most insights into... Uh, outliers, so you can hone in on segments that you can work with, or like who should you be engaging with to like, like because they're top line, or who should you be engaging with because there's issues and challenges. So, um, uh, is the is is a scatter chart on your roadmap? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, in multiple. Uh, we are not doing visual by visual. In, okay, with the Cartesians, we are doing by component. So we're going to start with data labels, and that will affect the sky charts. And then we'll go through mm. other stuff like axis, legend. That's what we're doing, like component by component. OK. Well, that's great, because then we're just going to see like massive upticks and, and turns. Encourage some people to like think about their, their graphs and, and the charts and, and, and what, what they use. Um, uh, I think the first Power BI report uh, I ever created that I was just passionate about uh, that. Like I show my wife about, and I show people in like a bar about actually use the uh, hex plot. Did did you ever use the hex plot scatter chart? Uh, at no. All? no, no, no. Which, which, which one is that one? Oh, it was a custom visual. And like you had to download it and you had to like manually put it in. Cause I don't even remember if it was in the store. Um, uh, but you, you could see, you know, it would create hex, hex, hexagons, mm -hmm. and you know, it would be, you know, more deeply colored where there are more u ticks inside of it, mm -hmm. and you could actually like toggle the ticks on and off, and it was oh. really great. And then when yeah. you'd like, when you'd like click on a button, 
like the hexagons would like roll to like wherever it was that was like oh you know like the focal point is here and then it'd roll up to there and so you'd, you'd even get like this directional shift in understanding like if you look at different segments where uh where content was and and what direction things were headed when you're doing that was that animated as well or just um fixed uh, it, it, well it i thought it was fixed but it felt like it was animated when you interact with it yeah. it was it was very very cool um uh, have you looked at that side of the house, that type of animation at all? Yeah, that's something else we want to do. It's not a big priority. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the least priority decision we have. Uh, we <laughs> want to focus more on the primary components. Like sure. really, I'll give you an example. When we apply conditional formatting to mm -hmm. any column chart, you get the, the columns and the bars changing color, but they don't express any legend. Like you don't know what that color is. Yeah, and we have no way to to display that on, until somebody does that in tooltips or, or find other workarounds. That's one thing, uh, mm. and we need to we need to solve that problem and make the legend more understandable and more insightful. So that's a primary component. We believe that that's a data visualization best practice perfectly. Then we we can service on top of the case. Okay. Yeah, and 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 you're spot on, right? And, and I think that's the right priority. I would not. <laughs> I would not change that direction what whatsoever, um, uh, you know. So that is absolutely fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but I, I do want to just call out a few things for the audience. Um, now uh, we're here to like I have questions for for Miguel, but and Miguel's going to share stuff. But really, we're here to talk with you. So if you have questions, please uh, prefix them with a Q. We're following the guy in the cube, Matthew Roach rules. Uh, so I I'll queue them up. Miguel, you don't have to worry about it. So you know, oh. yeah, I'll I'll, I'll queue it up. You can you can just you know do your thing and you can answer them. Um, uh, please 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 though, um, don't spam or repeat questions or uh, you know no inappropriate behaviors. Anyone you see in the chat who has a little like wrench by their name is an admin. They'll come along and they'll like block you or pause you and all that good stuff. So please don't please don't do that. We haven't had much of a, a cause for that. So. Um, uh, I, I think we're going to be pretty good with this. But if you have questions for Miguel, please post those into the chat. We're happy to uh, bring that forward. Okay. Now, um, this is our lunch and learn. Miguel, do you have deep into this? And we're going to get into it. So everybody, grab your beverage, grab your lunch, grab your pizza, grab your snacks, grab your Chinese, whatever you have for lunch. And uh, but let's grab a beverage first, and let's take that communal sip before we dive into it. So, all right. All right, that's nice. All right, let's get to it. What do we want to talk about first, Miguel? Okay, today I want to show you the, what is coming in November. I, I believe it's going to be next week at the, middle, at the middle or maybe at the end of the week. It's not 100% sure exactly what date, but it's going to be next week if everything goes well. Uh, and you're going to see these two features in Power BI, and I'm so excited to show you what is coming. This is just a first step towards more enhancements. And I cannot just hide my, my excitement. I'm so happy that you're going to see this in first hand. This is, I know people are going to say, uh, where can I find that? Like, I don't see in the product. It's not in the product yet until next week. All right. Okay. So you've heard it here first. This this brand new, it's not in the product. This is, this is where you got to go. And so people you know that aren't in the chat or, holy cow, uh, like uh, aren't on LinkedIn or aren't on X, uh, they they got to get in here to check this stuff out. All right. So yeah. uh, are you ready to show this to everyone? Yeah, I am. All yes. right. Let's head over. Here we go. All right. So this is, a, this is my demo example that I always use for, to showcase these features. And if you saw the blog in the, when we launched the new car visual, this is what I shared uh, with the community. And it's basically just a visualization for those ones that they don't know yet. Uh, where you can have multiple values, multiple uh, measures or fields, and then you can create these cards. One, one beautiful thing is only one single visualization can carry them all. You don't need to create multiple cards. And, and that's amazing because it will improve performance. It will make your report so fast. And then we added so many capabilities, like you can add images, 
Each car can have their own image as well. Like they, they are not tied to the same image. They, that, this can be as well dynamic. You can use SVG's charts if you want to replace these images with trends or any other um, chart there. So you have that possibility. Multiple people came up with great ideas. And you can, uh, as, you, as you can see, this car is gray and the rest is white. So that means that you can even change the, the background differently through each individual card or to all of them at the same time. Mm. We added this uh, accent bar at the top that you can as well create some, uh, add any color and maybe you can use it to, to show if something is positive or negative, then it can change from red to black or, or, or green or any color you want. So that's what we shipped back in, if I am not mistaken, in June, I believe. Yep. Uh, however, in in uh, November, in, in, in another week, you're going to see a huge change into the into this visual, into the new visualization. Yeah. Again, I need to I need to make sure that you understand this is a preview feature and our goal is for the multi row card, the, the, the card and the KPI card to be replaced by this new card. So in the mm -hmm. future, once we accomplish every single milestone, um, they, th those three visualizations will disappear from the gallery. Don't worry. You, you, your reports will continue showing that visualization. So we, we are not going to break anything. But, but people won't be able to access to those three visualizations anymore once this visualization reaches the product as GA. All right, so you, you will see only I, one. I, I have to say, I love that strategy. So you won't break anything. No. But you just won't be able to create new things like that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's correct. So that means if we, let me see, I don't think I have the, no, I don't have the, the new ribbon where, where we can see all the visualizations, but you will, you will only see, so these three, card, multi card, and KPI, they, they will be replaced by this new card. And right now, to, dif to differentiate this new card, we are putting this kind of flash icon at the top left. Mm. But once this reaches the GA, then it will have the same look and feel as, as the card. And it will be called just card. OK. OK, so that's the plan. And in order for us to move this one, they, it needs to be so powerful that it will really uh, su surpass the three visualizations that, you, that we have right now. Uh, so don't worry, it's not that we are going to make uh, a visualization not as good as the KPI or the multi row card. It's going to be well, like way superior than that. So now now that you have a context where we're going and why we're doing this, now let me show you. Oh, what... hang on one second. Mm -hmm. Christina has a question that I think okay. is very relevant here. So uh, she, she loves the flexibility. Uh, is the default size going to be smaller? Uh, 45 is just cannot possibly be the most common use size of uh for these visuals is it yeah the, uh this is the thing uh for the core visuals which is the the team that i'm working with we have three different um pillars pillar number one is formatting settings making sure that all the visualizations have enough uh control and then we should have good behaviors like when you resize them when you publish them to other places, they should behave correctly. The second pillar is style. So we want to completely change the look and feel. So when somebody designs a report, a report from scratch, it should look beautiful. And, and if you want to make changes, it should be something that you need to think about it because you, you, you might be able to move away from this clean and professional look and feel that I'll be able to give you uh, uh, like out of the box. And the third one is how you can control all those settings because you're going to notice with the new card visual that we have, like just comparing the card and the new card visual in the first milestone. Mm -hmm. The card, I believe, has like eight, eight, uh, eight or nine controls or formatting settings. Mm -hmm. And the new card visual has like three or 35. And this is just the first milestone. So when, once we move this one to the next four, it will be like a lot of formatting settings. So our team is going to work at some point to really improve all the formatting settings. And I know people hate when we move the, the, the format pane, but it's going to be for a good reason. You're going to, you're, you're actually going to crave or are going to push us to change it because we're just adding options and it's going to be quite difficult to, to use them. 
Okay, well, then I think this is a good time for uh, Matthias has a great question here. Will there be more love for on object viz? Latest feedback from the community was very hard. Yeah, of course, it will. Uh, the Canvas team is not, it's another team that works in the same umbrella as us, but we are the core visuals team, which we are responsible of everything that you can drag and drop into the page report. That's, that's our area. Okay. The Canvas team, is responsible of all of the formatting um, mm. controls, like an object, a ribbon, the whole frame in Power BI desktop, they own that space. So I am 100% aware that they are improving this and taking, and taking it to the next level um, in, the, in the coming months. Well, that is fantastic. And um, uh, to kind of piggyback on your comment about the, the um, uh, all of the new settings, uh, I'm just going to do a little plug for our friends over at powerbi.tips. Um, uh, have you seen their, their theme generator, Miguel? Yeah, I have. Uh, I'm grateful because I, I use it. They have a, a spectacular place where you can change and modify the look and feel of those uh, options. W right, like all of the options. All of them. Yeah. Right, all of them, right? So as soon as this stuff hits, I, I mean, I, I talked with Mike, I thought he said within 24 hours, like, yeah. This theme generator updates something crazy, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, even these new options I'm going to show you, all of them are going to be fully uh, customizable using themes. So in, in their side, you're going to be able to modify them and specify exactly the look and feel and then export that in, into a JSON. Yep. Oh, and I just post, posted the link to them in the chat. Beautiful. So yeah. uh, do head over there and check that out. All right, let's go back. Let's. Nobody wants to see our faces. Let's let's talk more about. Let's see what, okay. your, what your team's been working on. All right, now uh, this is the new stuff. Uh, as you can see, one of the disadvantages of this option is that if you want to use a summary page, you're gonna end up with a ton of blank space or or maybe like um, yeah empty space. And the other thing is you might need some kind of extra information. And right now the car is quite limited on that. However. With the new look and feel, with the, with the enhancements that we're going to do for the new car visual, you're going to be able to add what we call reference labels. Reference labels is a strong feature that you're going to see in other features soon as well, because the other ones are going to be tied to this uh, structure. And what I'm talking about structure is each reference label, I'm just going to move really close. I'm going to zoom in. Thank it, you. It's designed. Holy cow. Is designing three components title value and detail in here these ones are fully dynamic you can make the, this title be like changing dynamically based on filters whatever you want same as the value and same as the detail however the best approach for you to take advantage of this feature is just using a text a value that you want and maybe a measure uh, again, you can do whatever you want because we're giving that full control and all of them are dynamic. Something else that you can that you, you can see is that they are not tied. Like if you put revenue, automatically we'll put revenue for every single car. No, you're going to have control over what kind of reference labels you want per car. And even the look and feel, I can make the value for the revenue red or any color. I can increase the size and it won't affect the rest. This is like the full control, taking it to the extreme, like really give you everything you need to put your Leonardo da Vinci skills <laughs> and, 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 and do whatever you want. And, and, and being so dynamic is another great addition. You can see that the other element that we added is this divider line that you can remove or you can keep. This is, this is just as good, um, we call it, um, visual enhancements or best practices for, for human cognition. Mm. And one of them is being able to separate one content to the next one. So then it's easy for your brain to, to read this information. So we will give you some of those tools for you to take advantage, but you can deactivate this line and you can change the color of this section, make it exactly white as the, as the card in a, in a, in a very easy manner. And again, you can do this. Uh, at this moment, I believe it will apply to all cards, but in the future, you're going to be able to say, no, I want the line to be one card and the rest just no line and completely white. Uh, that's going to be another control that we'll give you later on. But at least at this moment in November, I mean, in next week, 
you're going to be able to to use this option as a global stack. Um, so wow. That's, so that's okay. What you, hang on one second. Uh, apologies. You've just outlined different measures, different contexts. How hard is this to create? It's all in one visual, right? All in one visualization. Remember, we are after performance. We want yeah. you. We don't want you anymore to start overlapping visualizations or to create those kind of uh, like using Figma in the, uh, images in the background and then putting visuals on top of it. No, we want you to start moving away from that practice and using the visualizations as they are, and we'll give you all the controls you need to really take it to the next level. This is amazing. Um, and are you able to show us how to configure one of these? Yeah, of course. So in the visualization pane, uh, so going as to an format, FYI for everyone, this was a yeah. test to see if this is vaporware. Like if this was just PowerPoint, he wouldn't be able to do this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you're going to see this new component, which is called reference labels. In the reference labels, you're going to see all the cards that you might have in that visualization. These are the oh. measures that you use to create that particular card or new card because, oh, I, I really don't know how to call it because it's, this is a card, but the whole visualization is a collection of cards. So in, in this way, you can select the one that you want. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna select this one um, total, this, no, agent quality. So I'm gonna select that one. And then you, you're gonna see here all the labels that I have added. I added rate, cost uh, of poor quality, and this cost of high quality. So that's how the three measures you can see here. I can add more if I want, and then it will continue adding. That's something else I forgot to mention. You're not restricted by three or two um, reference labels. You can add as many as you want. However, you need to work with the real estate that you have. So make sure that you increase the size so then all those labels that you want to add are visible. Otherwise, they won't be visible. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, you, you can add as many reference levels as you want. And then here are the three components I was mentioning, title, value, and detail. Title mm -hmm. is in here. I am using my, my content, but I can make this one dynamic. I can change it if that's what I want. The value is the same thing. The value is based on the measure that you use, and the detail is something that you can add any information in here and make it uh, work. So I'm going to just, I'm going to select rate, which is my first data label. I'm sorry, re reference label. So now that I selected rate, I can see that I'm using my field name. That's why it's taking it, taking this value as it is here. But I can say, no, I want to be custom and I can replace this with any measure I want. So then this title can be dynamic. It can change depending on your field parameters, your slicers, whatever you have, uh, it can change. So that's that's a great addition. Mm -hmm. uh, you can change the, the, the font, the color, and transparency of that text. Then the value is, again, tied to this component. If this is something you want to change, then you just replace that measure with something else. And then automatically will change your, your value right here. Um, you can change as well font. Uh, family, style, size, font color, transparency. And you can use the show blank as if the value gets blank, instead of showing that like quite blank statement that we used to have, now you can replace that with whatever you think is more convenient. And then we have the detail, which is again another field that you can just drag any measure from this place or replace it from the one that you have with any other measure and then uh, it will be just there. The only difference from the detail that is quite, um, that differentiates from the title and the value is this, um, what is it, color, which is basically this kind of background color that you can use just to emphasize your detail. I like using it for things like this, but it's not necessary. You can see that for total visits, my detail is another text. So it's giving me extra context or here. So you can use it in any way that you feel more optimal or more ideal. It's not necessarily something that you need to apply uh, the background color all the time, but it's a good so it's a good re uh, re resource for you to use. You can use as well that it, uh, it has the show blank as in case that you need it. 
And that's, that's, those are the three main components of the reference labels. Now, yeah, uh, so, so, so as an FYI, we're getting, uh, this is amazing. This is so awesome. Uh, wow, so many options. Uh, this this is great, and and Christina's right. Love seeing that that FX that function button all over the place. That is making people super happy, Miguel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am happy. <laughs> I am happy too. <laughs> yeah. Remember, I am a report creator, so I like designing stuff and being able to be the, the the product manager and work with the community because it's the community that actually is making this possible i am just being the bridge between the community uh, wishes and desires and the the product team i'm making sure that these two connect really well and at the end i'm so happy that uh, working so close with the community is paying off is and, and you can see this is the this is what happens this is the magic um yeah. well, Something else we have here is the divider, which is, is what I said. You, you will see that it's completely, like, you're gonna change it. But the only way for you to change this is when you go to all, and then now it's gonna be available for you to, to change. I can remove it, or I can turn it on. Uh, I can change the, 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 the thickness of this line, the transparency of the line, the style of the line, and all the stuff. Like, I'm giving you the basics, at least really to take it in any way you want and you can ignore the padding as in this way you can see that the line still there but now there, there is a padding space here and it's, it's, it's not it's not ignoring it or you can ignore it and have its own area completely separated from the call out section so again two options two styles that with one single toggle you can change the look and feel of your card uh, tremendously and then obviously the background for that section you can make it uh, change the color as you please. And uh, that's an, another great addition. Uh, and you can change the, the transparency. Finally, we have the layout where you can make it, you, you can make them look like this, like in rows, or you can make them in columns. So now they're gonna be side by side, like in here. And you can change the alignment if you want horizontal or vertical alignment. Again, I, I cannot take credit for this one, honestly. Like. Is the community representatives that work with all of you in social media? They 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 engage you. They have meetings with all of you, and they come back with us saying, "This is what we need." And I mean, it's just it's just amazing. And then control over the spacing. If you think that this is so close and you need more space, then you can change that. You can really improve the the, the separation and all the stuff. We are giving you padding options as well to separate how close this text is from the line. Uh, so again, I cannot continue saying full customized options. You can do whatever you want. And that's, that's gonna be the feature now. So we're gonna give you some, so many controls. And remember, this is just the, the second milestone. We need another three milestones to reach, to finish mm -hmm. the car visual. So you can see how many options, and these are all, all those options that I showed you is only reference labels. We have more options for call outs, more for image, and more things are coming. So in the future, this is gonna be packed of settings. And that's why in the, we, we, we really want to work with the community to improve the format pane and make all these options more intuitive to find and to adjust. But that's gonna be another another time that we when, when, when we can go deep into enhancements for the format pane. Well, right I, now, I, 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 honestly, I'd really like to thank you and Microsoft um, for being purposeful in your strategy of engaging with community leaders and getting the feedback from them. And uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you worked with a, a group of people for, I think a year, right? To like, I met with them regularly, got their feedback, cataloged all that stuff. And now you're on your second group uh, of, of people and you're of getting community feedback, representatives. right? Yes, yes. Yeah. In each of these community representatives have different backgrounds. Some of, yeah. their, so, some of them are uh, visual developers, another ones are designers, another ones are UI UX specialists, another one, another ones are more focused into data visualization best practices, another ones are more into first users uh, trainings or evangelization. So all of them have multiple backgrounds and they come together to bring this or to create the, the scope or the roadmap for the next semester or year. 
So they, they are the ones reviewing the whole documents. They're adding uh, suggestions or improvements into the, into the scope of each feature. And at the end, they are the ones shaping not only our roadmap, but as well each feature. So what you're seeing here is the result of all that collaboration and feedback that they collected from their own audiences. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I, that just, it warms my heart to see how much effort you're putting into this. And it's not just some like designer someplace coming up with ideas and then the community going, what the heck is this stuff? Because like to me and to what I'm hearing in the chat, like this aligns and gels, right? Like this looks amazing. Um, yeah, I, this is fantastic. And you're saying next week sometime we're going to be able to do this? Yeah, next week sometime. Just Ooh. be patient. It's going to be there. Uh, I would love to see uh, if you use, uh, we, we, we have a site in in LinkedIn, which is uh, PBI Core Visuals. I would like if people just ping us and show us what they can do or achieve with the new car visual uh, in reference labels. And, and, and that would be great to, to, to see the things that you can come up with. Um, as well, any feedback, any uh, suggestion, you can use our hashtag which is hashtag PBI core visuals all together. And what we do is we respond them, we classify them in our database. So everything can be uh, like, we, we, we can organize all the feedback in multi, into multiple ideas and then community representatives can use the database to really take advantage of their power, which is deciding what is coming next. But we are really listening of whatever you're saying and, and, and we're collecting it. Now, this is, this is fantastic. I'm a big fan of this, but I think you said there was something else we we're going to see next week too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something else. Uh, before we jump in there, this is okay. how we're moving towards. Like this is our multi row car. What? And as you can see, it has yeah. the same values as the one at the left side. But this is what what we were able to do as far as we were able to do it, and you can see the big difference. Now, right. there is another section, that's another capability that multi card allows you to do, which is using something like small multiples, like you, when, when you use multiple values and then you use uh, a like a text. Let me see if I can if I can create it. Um, I'm going to use maybe this one. No, I think I have multiple text here, but when, when you use all, uh, multiple values, and then one single text field, then you break that into multiple categories. And uh, that's something else that we want to add into the new card in the future. And that's gonna be adding small multiples in the new card. And with those two, with, with reference labels and, and, and small multiples, we will finally surpass um, the multi-row card. And then later on, we, we, we're gonna go after KPI card. And our goal is to super, surpass it as well. Mm. All right, so that's so that's the difference. You can see a big difference. Yeah. And now let's talk about the slicer. So the, the new slicer is a great addition. I'm just gonna move to the left side. Uh, it will give you as well a lot of controls. Oh, one thing that I need to mention is this new slicer right now is just gonna be the button slicer, but eventually we're gonna have the list drop down slider the calendar slicer that is new in the, and uh, and I think that's it because the relative slicer will be part of the calendar slicer. Mm. So we have new slices that, that, that we're going to add to this new slicer. And right now, when, when you go into Power BI, all you're going to see is the button capabilities. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit uh, uh, in a moment. But he, this is a, a way for you to, to see what, what is coming on or, or, or what is happening here. So we have this uh, new button slicer, and it, al it allows you to add, to, to, to change the shape, and you can do it like every single corner can change. I'm just going to get closer. Sorry, I was doing some experiment on the left side. Just ignore this. Uh, we, we can change how round that we want every single corner of this button, and we want uh, as well users to change the layout, if you want this to be rows and columns and the space between each of these cards, uh, you can change the callout and define by each state. So this is how it looks when it's default, hover, press, and selected. This is when it's hover. This is when it's 
pressed, as you can see, oh, sorry, it's, it's gonna change color like a, like a blue color. Let me click this one, like this. Or when it's selected, it will be another style. So everything that is selected in this one is it gets this kind of light blue and even the the label changes. That's something else that we're adding label. In the in the value, when I go into format settings, you're gonna see that we have the field. And when you go into the callout values, it has that value from that field, but as well you can add labels. This is a, a like an amazing option for you to if you want to show how many rows how many sales that particular product you have. In, in this example, I'm showing you the email of the, each of my uh, agents, but you, you can use this label for whatever you want. It's a, it's a really useful component. And um, we, 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 we just want to add it. Uh, something else that we are oh, doing here. Oh, is... Hang on one second, Miguel. On, on that point, Aman is asking, are we going to have similar formatting options uh, for mobile view? Yeah, the, uh, this is going to be able to join into the mobile section and, and you can use all those options there too. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, awesome. awesome. Something else to, to mention is the search uh, capability will continue and the clear selection button is not going to be part of the, how, how, how do we call it? Slicer uh, title or I forgot the name, but we had this icon instead of the slicer stuff and now it's we removed that because it was a little bit annoying and impossible to edit so now you can change the color or transparency of this by going through the icons in the future you're going to be able to put this one instead of the of the visual itself and you can change as well the size the color and the effects that that it has but now you're going to be able to to modify this uh, icon and it's not completely instead of the visual now it's part of the outside uh, that's something else that we are doing. Uh, another thing that I really like is in the tile slicer, when you have single selection, that single selection always selects one visual. But if you want to select um, all, all options, it's impossible because always predefine a single selection. In the new one, the, in the button slicer, you can unselect, and this is basically like selecting all. So now allows us to have single select that support select all. And if this is not enough and you want it to be more um, like clear, you can add the, the select all option and now you, you can select all my buttons from this particular item. But that's depending if, if that's what you want. If you don't want to do that, then just by selecting individual items is all you need. Mm. You can change the single select, multi-selection, for selection, if you want to always keep one one visual selected, like like the tile slicer, if this is what you want to keep uh, doing, then just use op this option, and we will always select one option for you. That's what this does. Um, what else? Oh, again, image stuff. I'll show you more about the image because there are some cool stuff. But something that I like is this tooltip. Uh, now the slicer has tooltip and it's, it's great because you really can show multiple information in your slicer itself. And something else that this is a hidden trick is if you use if you use tooltips in your in your uh, in your slicer, you, if you use a tooltip from a measure, the first one that you use can sort your your your, your values. In this case. Mike um, is the one with more sales, so it's the first one showing up. And you can do that by sorting that information or you're just selecting the, like adding in here and automatically will be sorted by that in, in that way. So it's not, right now it's not super clear. We're gonna improve that to make it super clear and super easy for, for new creators to detect that they can sort their the order of each of these buttons by other measure. But right now, if you really want to do it, you can do it in this way and it will work perfectly. This is fantastic. Yeah, if, I, I don't, if I don't have that, then it will go alphabetically, as you can see. And honestly, that is how people want to interact with it, right? Like, who is who is the, the top of the heap, right? Let's, yeah. let, us, let us define that in all sorts of situations. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. another great addition. Yeah. Holy cow, this is then incredible. We have, then we have the industry stuff. This one is 
one that I did so then you can see images mm. and you can see how this actually works. It's like, it's really doing what we want to do. It feels nice. It feels good. Another arrangement, this is putting the image over to the top. So this is an example that you can make the button slicer look completely different. And what a great way to show you the difference by using these like button examples that I have here. With the same button, you can see multiple options. So let's see this one. I use the image to make it look like a, like a selection box. So this is an image that is just changing depending on the state. And it's wow. changing the color as well. So that's one. Uh, I can use the image in the background of the button slicer to look like this. So then I can use like a, some kind of toggle uh, situation. And this is just by me tr uh, working with the image of the color. So I'm just going to go into the button and I'm going to go to fill. And here is the, that image does that. So it's saying when it's default, use this image. When it's uh, pressed, then use other image. And so on. So that this this creates the trick that it, that there is a toggle here, even though that is just an image. But it's just so perfect that people will think that it's part of the the same button. Well, it is part of the same button, but it is not a toggle. In, in exactly, it's just how I play with the with the features. Uh, what that I'm, means can I can you toggle on both uh, multiple cards there then? Uh, the, for this one, yeah, I can just go to. Slice settings and then multiple selection. And now we have, okay. All options wow. are here. Yeah, everything is in here. Like, uh, again, I cannot take the credit. Community representatives are the ones uh, really gi giving us all the requirements and, and based on their experience, uh, I'm just I'm just working with them. So they did an, a phenomenal job allowing us to, to put this into the scope. Wow, and and you, uh, Jeff Weir has said, and I'm, I don't know which exact one he's referring to, but he said this is exactly something he asked for. Miguel, love it. So uh, <laughs> this is yeah. this is awesome. All right. So that the other one that I'm so excited is this one. Uh, this one was a idea from the engineers themselves. Like they came up with this. Hey, let's do this, and I said, like, why not? Uh, we're, <laughs> why not? Let's add more stuff. Uh, in the image, you're going to see now options like saturation and blur. We're going to add even zoom. So when you hover, the image can look like bigger or smaller. In this case, I'm adding, um, when I'm hovering, I'm adding blurness, as you can see, 80% blur. So when I'm hovering, that image creates this kind of effect. It is, it's just amazing because you can really do some of those things that, you, that we can see in Pinterest, and places like that, that it, it was just impossible to achieve. Now you can really take it to that level. Like I'm talking about really get close to that kind of look and feel. Uh, you can see as well how the, the information, for example, here we have the label and the value. I was able to move instead having the, in here I can see the label below the value, but I can move that label to the top. Mm. And we have these two, but when I hover, I can only see the value and I added a background to even make that text more visible uh, or readable. And when I press, you see that it changes. Now the text is larger or I remove the background. And then when it's selected, then it gets this kind of a uh, bar at the bottom, like some kind of like, um, like accent bar saying, Hey, this is selected. I know that the whole blue is telling you that it's selected, but maybe this is another touch that you can make it look nicer. Um, that's, that's what this does. Another great uh, example is this one. You can see how it seems like the one selected is a little bit bigger than, than the other ones. And that's because I'm playing with all, some of the settings as well to make that trick. So then when I select total followers, now total followers look quite uh, taller than the other two. And then it's using the same button slicer. Um, the other one here is having different layouts. You saw how everything looks here like a horizontal, but this one is using a grid um, um, layout. So here I can as well select multiple items if that's what I want. You can see how I can make my icon uh, change the, the background, the color, make it visible. And that's, that's, that's what I was mentioning. 
multiple people are saying, hey, I want to see the toggle. I want to see a toggle. We did. You can use our image or the feel of the background of the button to create that effect. And it works just perfect. Uh, later on, we will add uh, what we call um, selection markers, which is those squares that you see in the buttons, like something like this. And we will give you mm -hmm. predefined options. We will give you the, the, the checkbox, the, the radio box, or no, I'm sorry, the, it's like a circle selection stuff. And then we'll give you the toggle one. And that's where you can use that, uh, that toggle uh, from, from us and you can choose the color. However, you can continue using image or background if you have a very unique design of toggles and you can continue using it to create this effect. And this is using the button slicer. One visualization does the trick. No more uh, bookmarks like, like changing that stuff around. Uh, that's, that's the thing that we are changing, not hiding and showing by using bookmarks. Now, uh, Jeff is, is, uh, is pushing us to, to allow these slices to work with the bookmarks. And that's what we are going to do as well. Like we're, we want to define and work with the Canvas team who owns bookmarks and see how we can connect this button slicer with bookmarks that, that trigger certain actions. But we, we just need to work together to, to make it work. Well, that is fantastic. So, Jeff, there you are. Uh, prayers are not answer, but they're in flight. Yeah, yeah. And here's the here is the tile slicer. Let's let's see a comparison. In the tile slicer right now, we have these values, and that's it. You can see that there is no in the background that I can change the color. That's all you, we can do. But that hover is always gray. The the select one is always black, and we cannot change much uh, out of all these things. This is pretty limited. Now, when we go into the slicer settings, you're gonna see this options um, group. And then here we can see the tile, vertical, drop down, and then depending the data type, you'll see before, after, between, etc. This is what I'm saying. Don't get confused. The, the, the button slicer will have the same options, but at this moment, because we only have one type, we are not adding it. But once we work on the next milestone, which is the list and drop down, then we will implement the same control as you can see here. Mm. Uh, in, in, below slicer settings, you'll see options, and then you'll see button, uh, list, slicer, and drop down. Mm. All right. So, mm. in theory, this is the new slicer with the button style applied. That's what wow. it is. If that wow. makes sense. Yeah, I, I think so. And uh, David Wilson just wants to clarify, is this going to be a preview feature next week too? Yeah, it's going to be a preview feature. And the, the remember I said, the new car visual, the goal is to replace the car, multi-row car, and KPI car. The new slicer, its mission is to replace the existing um, slicer. So mm -hmm. we, will re we will remove that slicer. And again, don't worry your slicers, your old slicers, and your old reports will continue working perfectly. But you won't be able to create that old slicer anymore once this new slicer replaces the old one. And the new one will have all the capabilities that, that you want. That's okay. the difference. That's awesome. And, and Jeff wants to clarify, is there any way we can get a toggle setting for how many objects could be selected? So if you're, you do allow multi-select, can I, and, and Jeff's asking for two, but can we say, you know, maybe you allow them to select five or select three or, or whatever it is. is yeah, that that's something we yeah. Can do? yeah, yeah, that's something else that we want, in, that, that we have in the scope. We want users to as well define how many, like the top of selections that they can apply. However, we detected that the, the, the ask for, for limited uh, selections is really low. So we're gonna get it until the end when we finish uh, list and drop down, and then we will implement it because the next one will be slider, and slider doesn't have that kind of controls, or the calendar slicer won't have that kind of control. So we we just need to wait until we finish the next milestone. So um, and, and actually th that's a a great point we should kind of hit on. Uh, so not only is it important for you to head over to uh, the LinkedIn PBI Core Visuals. Uh, I'll post a link again in the chat because 
we have a lot of people talking here, and I think it got it has its way up at the top there. Um, wait, why didn't that copy paste? Copy paste. There we go. Um, uh, so make sure you get that feedback into into Miguel and his team. But let's also, as you guys like this stuff, like post this out, share this with people. Let's make sure people are aware of this. Like, like Miguel, you've got a team of people. How many people are in your team? Uh, we have uh, eight engineers and two mm -hmm. designers, but we need more. We, right. And the only way is for all of you guys to be noisy, like publish this, uh, our leaders are, are looking at what, what you're saying. Every word counts. And if you if you if you really want us to speed up and, and continue doing this work, we cannot do this alone. We need all of you. And, and you yep. need to be vocal. You have to be loud. Yeah. So please, please, when this stuff comes out next week, let's let's get in there. Let's work with it. Let's talk about the things that we like about it. Let's be constructive in this, right? Like like Miguel and his team, it, I mean, a huge investment. Eight engineers, two designers. Uh, I mean, that that's a lot of money that Microsoft is, is spending on this. They're investing in this. They want to see that these results are getting good, good traction. So we can, you know, like, let's hype this up. Let's make sure we're talking about this because this is awesome. It's the stuff that we need to, to yeah, know the, and we need the, to do. The so best way, the, the best way to spread the, the voice is by sh sharing this in social media. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what social media I, like you're using, but yep. always use the hashtag PBI, um, Power BI and the hashtag PBI Core Visuals. If you do use that one, um, that's that's how we can use uh, to collect it and show that to our leaders. If you're not using that uh, hashtag, it's impossible for me to go after all the feeds in social media and trying to collect them as, as I see them there. It's just impossible. But if you use right. that, that uh, hashtag, I can go right into it and then collect it and then present that to my my, my leaders. Oh, that's awesome. Um, no, we have a couple of questions and I want to make sure we get through all these um, uh, uh, the images you're showing. Uh, how do you manage those? Where do they come from? How do you get that data into? Are you getting into tables? Are they links? What, how does that work for you? Yeah, URLs, it can be fixed URLs or you can use it in another table that you might have in your in your data query. Um, later on, you can import them as well. I think you can import some of them as well. Uh, another ones that we want to do in the future is to support SVG. So if you have SVG mm -hmm. images, then it will be supported. Uh, but right now, the most convenient way to manage them is using URLs. OK, fair enough. Uh, and then um, uh, Imran, hey, what's going on, man? Um, <laughs> he wants to know, are we able to like connect drop downs, list slicers, two conditional formatting options. Yeah. Yeah, but that's another milestone. We want to improve conditional formatting from scratch. Oh. And, uh, that's going to be part of the of that uh, work. Multiple people are, are asking, like, you have no idea. I, I, I am going through all the Power BI ideas, and we have thousands of the ones that I need to continue reviewing. But I am not, not noticing a huge amount of people asking for auto selection. So they want the slicer to auto select the, whatever conditions they have based on the measures. What, what we discovered is that we thought that we could do this when we were doing the slicer. But the, after really deep investigations, we realized that no, the one that controls that auto selection is conditional formatting. And we need to change conditional formatting from the ground up if we want the slicers to be auto selected, like uh, having some kind of measures to auto select. Yeah, we are after that. I need to continue defining that problem. Engineers need to continue looking at how much work that's going to be, and then community representatives have to decide when we are going to do it, because they are the ones deciding uh, what 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 is next, not me. Okay, no, and and that is absolutely fabulous. And uh, I I just want to iterate. We want to get all this 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 positive feedback supporting this stuff getting getting behind this like if you've got issues or challenges bring that out but like don't be a jerk and like you know miguel sucks you know no no don't do any of that stuff he doesn't suck he's no, a no, very nice good. guy right no, yeah. no. even that is good even that is good. <laughs> yeah. i mean jeff jeff is, is always a very uh, emotional and really straightforward um uh follower but 
he, 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 all, the, all the feedback is for a good uh, reason, and we are not taking things personal. We are more logical here, we're more strategic here, and even if some kind of the uh, message comes kind of rude, we can move that rudeness away, and we can subtract what really matters for all of us to, to succeed. So do it in any way you feel that, is, that makes you comfortable, um, and we are, we are okay accepting everything. There, there are no bad feedbacks. I have to say that. No, no bad feedback. <laughs> Just give us feedback. That's what we need. <laughs> so uh, he does attend the, the, the annual like uh, programming event to say there's no bad feedbacks. But let's be nice. You know, we can be nice people. We're nice, you know. Uh, but if you have problems, do challenge it, right? Uh, you know, I clearly I'm uh, like no or hashtag no Dax columns. You know, like I don't. I don't stray away from controversial things. I don't think you should either. Um, <laughs> but let's try to be constructive and let's try to lay a positive path forward here. So um, we are near, we only have a handful of minutes left, Miguel. Is there anything else you wanted to show this group before we went? Or? No, I cannot show, but I can tell you what is coming in December. So in, the, in December, we're going to have control over shapes in visualizations. When I'm talking about shapes, I mean columns bars and ribbons mm. you're going to see a ton of flexibility now of what they're going to offer you and finally you, you're going to be able to use more or create a more accessible visualization that uses those, those shape visuals and data labels are going to go through the first transformation that's going to change entirely the future of cartesians and is the foundation for what is coming next um, so that's all the two features that are coming in december well, I, that is fantastic. So, so this train isn't stopping. We're it's getting on the problem. data visualization train. You are plowing forward. We're getting this stuff out, and you're driv driving it from the feedback from the community. That yeah, all for, all from for from your uh, feedback. Oh, if you publish something seven years ago in Power BI Ideas, I will get into it and I will classify it, and I will make sure that that voice is not being lost, and 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 it will be grouped. You're going to see from, or you're, you're going to hear from us. We're going to create a bunch of ideas. We're going to summarize all the ones into single buckets so everybody can vote and, and, and provide feedback in a more organized manner. Uh, but that's going to happen, I, be, I believe, at the beginning of next year. So follow us in social media. Uh, check out what we are publishing there because we will inform you once everything is settled, like completely um, well defined. Oh my gosh, my heart is just beating a mile a minute here. Um, Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so it, uh, uh, you know, we are starting to wrap up here. Uh, let me uh, vocalize the, the message that is coming from the community, uh, not just to you, Miguel, but like clip this for your engineers. Uh, you know, yeah. Maybe they're listening. Uh, maybe they're not. But like, we are so grateful for the time and energy they're putting into this. I know how hard it is to build these things. I know how hard it is to like sweat over every little detail and like have the worst conversations about like, should the drop down be this, this or that, right? Like, thank you for taking the time to go through all of that stuff with, with such loving care. It is, it's really appreciated by, by everyone in the community. Yeah, totally. Uh, designers and engineers are phenomenal. We have the most talented people. They are really good working as a team. They, they, they really appreciate the feedback from all of you. And we are uh, just happy to work together with, with the whole community. So I, I cannot be more like grateful of working with the team that I have. I'm just here being the face and I hate being like the face, but that, that was my role. Uh, but uh, there are more people behind me and, and, and they are the ones that should have the credit. Yeah. So. If you see them, uh, if you meet anyone out that's that's on Miguel's team, buy them a drink, buy them a coffee, yeah. you know, whatever it happens to be. Whatever. Uh, they're putting tons of energy on this stuff. So we are just so eternally grateful. And there is more questions in the chat about your amazing poncho. Um, ah! <laughs> no, it's just, it's just a poncho. Huh? I'll find well, that's my first I'll, question, I'll too. Buy. Like, where is that, right? Yeah, I'm going to buy and then I'll, I'll give to the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are so many what I use. Uh, yeah. PBI Core Biz, Biz Ponchos. 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 Ponch
Uh, all right. Well, excellent. Thank you, Miguel, for, for, for joining us. Thank you all for coming in and seeing this great stuff. Do provide feedback to Miguel. Uh, like you said, hashtag PBI Core Visuals, hashtag Power BI, tag a minute on X, on LinkedIn, on any of your social medias. You're aggregating it, right? I presume yeah. you've got a scraper that's going out there grabbing it, right? Yeah, yeah. If people don't believe me, I can even show like how we are classifying everything and every single comment that arrives. We read it, we classify it, and we try to answer them. But nothing has been this, uh, this or removed from, from, from this database. And even like, like I said, all the Power BI ideas from many, many years ago, we're going after them and we're classifying them too. Yeah, we're not going to leave like all of those voice and time that you spend gi gi uh, gi giving us feedback won't be wasted. We, we, we will collect it and we will make sure that that's part of the scope. Yes, yes. And as Jeff said, Pancho, Pancho Man. man. <laughs> I want to be a Pancho Man. <laughs> all right. And, and with that, everyone, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.